Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to this Astro Chat episode all about the leadership battle in England. I woke up yesterday and saw the news and thought, wow, this is really interesting what's going on there. Let's take a look. So of course I plug in some details of people in my astrological system. I already have Boris Johnson's chart in my system. I've studied him before, but I wanted to see the charts of Rishi Sunak and Sajid Javid as well. I wanted to see what prompted them to leave at this time, to resign. Okay, so they haven't fully left politics as I understand. I think they're still going to be on the back benches, but they have resigned from their positions. So I'm again, I'm not very familiar about how any of this works. What I am interested in is the astrology. I'm interested in seeing why have they resigned at this time? Why are there something like 40 odd people who are against Boris Johnson? What is the future of Boris Johnson? What's going to happen to him? And the other thing I wanted to take a look at was a couple of charts to show you some contrast of two people who I think, now I know a little bit about Gail Kelly. I'm going to show you the chart of Gail Kelly. She is an Aussie, well, a South African lady who ran one of Australia's top four banks. Okay, hers is a great chart to look at to see someone who's capable of running something very big. And the other chart I wanted to take a look at is Malcolm Turnbull. I don't know too much about Mal Malcolm Turnbull. I know that he did run this country for I think two or three years. I wasn't in the country while he was running it, so I'm completely unfamiliar with what he did or if he was any good. But I'm gonna bring up those two charts for contrast as well because they demonstrate what you would want to see in the chart of a prime minister. I think it'll offer some nice contrast. Uh, the charts of Kelly, Gail Kelly, Malcolm Turnbull, Rishi Sunak is in line with those charts, I believe. And we can contrast that with Boris Johnson. I think that would be very interesting. So why don't we take a look? What did I say? I think I said I wanted to see why did Rishi and Sajid resign recently? Can we see that? In Rishi Sunak's chart, we can see that. When I take a look at the transit wheel, to me, it is obvious. So yes, we can look at Vimshotri Dasha as well. Um, that I'm not so able to look at actually because I don't know his time. I've got a time here of 12 p.m. I'm just using that time for now. Uh, and the way that I've got the chart set up at the moment is with a Cancer Ascendant. This could be true because Sun is exalted in the 10th. So that is a beautiful position for a prime minister or someone who's going to run a country. And we can see here that there could be some form of loss with the moon there in the ninth and Venus there in the 12th. So the way the chart is currently set up here, this is actually not too bad. If we take a look at him from the transit wheel, one of the interesting things we can see is that's so another date is 7 July 2022. Good. Uh, his Saturn has just moved into Aquarius, which is actually, he's getting a taste of Sadi Sati, okay? And he's getting that taste till about the mid-July point, right? So this is quite interesting. He is, he's just kind of dipped his toe into Sadi Sati period. And it's almost as if there's something within him that is like, I can't tolerate the environment that I'm in. And this can be the work of Saturn because Saturn will, over the Sarisati period, he will be highlighting things like honesty, integrity, the environment that you're in. You know, it's, it's, this kind of event does match what we've got going on here in the transit wheel. The other thing that I find really interesting with the chart of Rishi Sunak and when we look at him from this transit wheel is we've got Rahu in the 10th. Career is a particular focus. Rahu is there with Uranus. Rahu is there with Mars as well. Okay, so that is 10th from his ascendant. So work, career, ambition, all of this is very much highlighted. Most interestingly, Saturn has just dipped his toe 8th from Rishi's ascendant. 
that is what I find very interesting because eighth from the ascendant or eighth from the moon, and I see this all the time in my practice, this is a time where people massively transition in their career. This is a time where people switch from one kind of career that they've been doing possibly for 20 years and they do something completely new. And that was me. That's what happened to me. So I was in advertising for 20 years, thereabouts, and I switched, didn't I? I became a coach. I became the Vedic life coach, you know, and that happened to me when Saturn was transiting eighth from my moon. One thing I discovered as well was that writing contracts and advertising contracts, they just started to dry up. I just wasn't magnetizing the work anymore. And I'd had a dream run. I'd had a very good run over there in England. I, it was very easy to get work. If ever I lost a job, there was always another one immediately. And then I find, you know, Saturn is transiting eighth from the moon. Thank God for astrology. I was able to see what was happening to me. And I was able to see that this is, yeah, this is really a good time for me to now pursue my heart's desire, to pursue what it is that I really want to do. That is what I would be saying to Rishi Sunak. I would be saying to him that if you find the game of politics is too corrupt, is too dirty and grubby, which it kind of is now, you know, the whole thing feels like it's crumbling, doesn't it? All kind of governments everywhere. And we're going to see that over the next, now I think that's going to be over the next 10 to 20 years. Let's have a look. This is to do with Pluto and Capricorn. We're going to see governments and the way we do business totally transformed right till about 2038, 2039, thereabouts. We're going to see, I think, these heavy top-down government structures will flatten and lighten and, um, you know, we'll have technology doing a lot of things. We'll have artificial intelligence even doing things. And we'll have, I think, more local leaders, localized leadership. At least that's what I'm hoping. You know, um, I'm not so keen on the AI thing, but <laughs> I, I do see the technology, it's inevitable. It, it will change the way we do life here. But government and these heavy top-down structures, you know, the way that they are now, that's going to flatten and, and change, especially as Pluto heads to Aquarius, okay, which in our system, that's going to be kind of 2040. But let's go back here to Rishi and see what's going on. I mean, what I'm seeing here for him is that he has the potential in the next 2.5 years, starting next year, he's got the potential to totally change what he does. If he is not enjoying being in politics, he can leave politics altogether and do something completely different if he wants to. He might not want to. He might be planning to sit on the back benches and gather support and go for the top job. That is a possibility. Uh, one of the things I see with him is that he could be a little bit like David Miliband. I know in British politics, I used to follow it a little bit some years ago, and I used to, I actually thought David Miliband was okay. I, I thought he, he would be an interesting leader. He was a bit of a rising star at the time when I, you know, I used to watch a bit of TV in the kind of 2000s, I think it was. Was it 2000s? Somewhere there. And I thought he was someone who was an interesting candidate for having the top job. But it's interesting, I think he had, I think there were a couple of windows where he could have gone for the top job. He didn't. He somehow lost to his brother Ed, which I, I must look at that one day through the astrology. I haven't studied that, but that would be very interesting because he's got some significant karma there with his brother. So he somehow lost to Ed and then uh, what happened with him? I think there are a couple of windows where, yeah, he could have gone for it, but he never did. Then he got some cushy job, I think, in some kind of international organization. He changed his life quite a bit. And people are still inviting him back. People are still wanting him to come back to British politics. I feel like that could happen with Rishi Sunak quite easily. This could be a, a transition point where he decides to leave uh, the game of politics altogether. And that, I think that would be advisable if there's something else he has a burning desire to do that he really wants to do. And he might think, you know, I'd be more effective elsewhere. I think that would be a sensible move for him. So in, Saj uh, in Rishi Sunak's chart, we can see that, yes, career change is now here for him as Saturn is in Aquarius. And that's going to be, so Jan, Feb 2023 to March 2025. He's got all that time to make 
a massive transition if he really wants to, or to totally revolutionize or change what he does. He can do that. When I look at the chart of Sajid Javid by contrast, am I able to see that he would be leaving his job or resigning or doing any of that? Not particularly. When I look at the transit wheel, so interestingly, he's got Saturn Rahu lit up as per Vimshal Tri Dasha, so I can see that. I can see houses three and five, but it's interesting from the moon that is six and eight. So we can see that he might be dealing with something a little bit interesting here, that there could be some difficult situation, and this could involve um, six from the moon, which is Rahu, so this could be competitors, this could be um, peers, something to do with career, yes, we can see that, and it could be some trauma, or some difficulty, or some stop or break in career, which is Saturn 8th from the moon. So we can kind of see that from Vimshaw 3 Dasha. But here again, is this something where I, I, I might not, I wouldn't predict it with this chart. With Rishi Sunak, you know, without knowing it's Rishi and without knowing what's going on, I would definitely say that the person who holds that chart is coming up to some kind of massive career transition. So we can see that there with Rishi. With Sajid Javid, we've had Saturn pass over his natal Mars. There is some work related event that has happened here, but I probably wouldn't wouldn't say. We do have Rahu 8 from the moon. We've got Mars and Uranus there. So 8 from the moon, again, that is a little bit of 8 from energy, which can be career transition or change. I can see it. I can see it now, but I, I might not have foreseen it with Sajid Javid's chart, as I could see it in Rishi Sunak's chart. Let's take a look at the chart of Boris Johnson and see what's going on there. I just want to check on the time. Wow, 12 minutes already. Okay, uh, let's have a look. So what's he running? He is running <clears throat> Mercury Sun. Is that right? December 2022. Yes, it is right. Mercury Sun. And he's going to... Well, the spotlight is on him. We've got his 10th house lit. We've got... And we can read this chart. We do have his ascendant. Okay, so uh, this chart we can read and we've got the 10th house lit, the 9th house lit. So he's in the spotlight, career and 9th house. This is his team. This is the people around him. This is the people that he is directly responsible for and leading. So we can see that that is all lit up there. Uh, let's take a look at the transit wheel. What's going on? Yes, I remembered seeing this yesterday morning. Hang on, let me bring this up. For some reason, my transit wheel thing doesn't work. Okay, we've got uh, Boris Johnson coming up to a Saturn return, natal Saturn return. So when I saw this, this was quite interesting because I feel like this is Saturn closing off a 30 year cycle. And Saturn return very often is a painful time. It's a difficult time in a person's life. I still remember my first Saturn return around 29, 30 years of age. It was difficult. And I remember actually that was the time I was working in an ad agency and one of the guys, one of the copywriters in his 50s, he, uh, he asked me about my life, what was going on, because I was sharing with people all the problems I had. And he said to me, you, it sounds like you're going through Saturn return. He said, you might want to check that out. And I did. And that was one of my first intros to, well, Western astrology anyway. I became very interested in astrology from that point because everything I read about Saturn return was exactly what I was going through. During a Saturn return, Saturn will press on the weak links of your life. It might feel very painful. It might feel very difficult. There are a lot of circumstances out of your control. There's just nothing you can do. Very often you're put in a rock in a hard place. You're in some very uncomfortable situation where there's nothing you can do about it. It does feel like Boris Johnson is going through something like this. It's also karmic in nature. So this is interesting. I was thinking about that this morning, that what does it mean to go through difficult karma? It's wonderful to go through good karma. Okay, so you look at someone like 
Zoe Sugg and you'll see that she's got a beautiful life and a and beautiful karma you know just, she's earning so much money per month she just flows in if she makes a video or not it doesn't matter the life is easy she doesn't have to work too hard it's very good right very very good life so when karma is good we love to receive it but when it's not so good you know and you have to pay right you have to pay the debt and this is what's really interesting and i was thinking this morning about how it's not always good to aspire to the top job or to having a lot of fame or having a lot of power which is what boris johnson has chased after okay let's take a look at his chart we've got rahu in the 10th okay hang on, let's bring this up we go oh, where is he there he is rahu in the 10th right so he's had the ambition and he's gone for the top job he's wanted it and he's chased after it he's got rahu's son in the 10th as well so that is he's he wants the best thing right he wants the biggest and the best thing he's gone for it so this is someone who's who's gone for the best thing but when you get there and I liken bad karma to kind of this d delicious ice cream that's in front of you that looks so appealing and you just want to eat it. It looks wonderful. But you start eating it and an hour later it makes you sick. Now, if you knew it was going to make you sick, you would never have touched it, right? So that's a way of looking at karma because... There are things in life that are just so appealing. You know, think about it. People get married. You go, oh my God, I love this person so much. And you want to marry them. But you marry them and then that's when the pain starts, right? Or the difficulties or the challenges, all these things come up. Now Chuck Spezzano, the psychologist, he talks about that. And he says that that's actually a real compliment to you in the partnership if all the difficult stuff comes up. Uh, after the relationship is secure, it means that person feels safe enough to let out their true self and their, their true stuff. They can be them, their full selves in front of you. They can kind of relax. So in psychological terms, Chuck Spezzano always says that when that happens, take as a compliment. And you know, you clear through that and you can of course heal and make a wonderful relationship. So don't worry if you're in that situation. But what I'm talking about here is this concept of you know karma that it's very often dressed up it's the carrot that's dangled in front of us and it's it seems very appealing and we want it but then you get it and then the pain begins because you have to pay the karma and you would never pay you would never take that situation if you didn't um, you know it had to be appealing so I, I kind of feel like with Boris Johnson this whole thing has been some kind of karmic setup to put him in this situation and the other thing is that see if he was to resign and just be at home and let's say Saturn was to allow him to just resign and be at home he wouldn't be paying the karma in the same way he's got to pay it at the top with everybody looking at him see how awful this is like it's just nobody nobody wants to have that experience this Rahu son would have taken him to the top but uh, there, there certainly is some karma to pay here and I do think this is Saturn in Aquarius in his sixth house there that when I look at the birth chart it's an interesting one because on the one hand I think that is the one placement and that is the one star that makes him somewhat fit to be a prime minister I don't see this as a prime ministerial chart I'm going to show you some other charts which which are and you're going to see the contrast here. But I do like his Saturn in the sixth house in Aquarius. But equally, we're seeing that as soon as Saturn has stepped into Aquarius, he's now feeling the pain. This is that sixth house activating. It's karmic, it's painful, it's difficult, right? He's having all kinds of just absolute chaos to deal with. And he's paying the karma. So it's like he's eaten the ice cream, you know, but <laughs> now the pain is, is settling in. One of the things I think about spiritual work is that uh, it, it enables you, if you do a lot of spiritual work, you can kind of clean your karma. You can eat the ice cream and not be sick, right? If that's the kind of ice cream it is. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? <laughs> it's an analogy. All right, so let's take a look 
uh, what kind of charts are more prime ministerial in nature. So is Boris, does Boris Johnson hold that kind of chart? Well, somewhat. Uh, there are good things in here. There are redeeming factors. There's that Ketu in Sagittarius in the fourth house of home and home country. Okay, this is an experienced leader from past lifetimes. He has done leadership. He's, he's, he's proven he's a leader. He's got that ability in there. As well, the Saturn, the powerful Saturn there in the sixth house in Aquarius. That is a strong uh, position. And that is one of the positions that's giving him some perspective on, you know, there's some humanitarian energy here. There's also Satta Bishat, there's the healer of the collective consciousness. This is a person who, he, he, you know, he, he, that Saturn is there to serve the people, right? That's true. But then you look at some other things in this chart that are just, that, that for me, they don't gel. So we've got Rahu, Venus and Sun in Gemini in the 10th. All right, so this is, these are light energies here. Also the Tauri, Taurian energies here in the ninth house. We've got Mercury, Mars there. We've got Jupiter in Aries, okay, in that kind of, all in that kind of public sort of area of the chart. But this is, that's lightweight kind of energy and it's, um, it's kind of superficial energy. I don't, I don't want to, you know, say anything bad about anyone and I never want to say anything bad about anyone because I know sometimes people they'll email me long emails because they've been upset with what I've said about someone I, I don't want to but I'll, I do want to speak my mind as well and I'm, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say this is the chart of someone who could run an ad agency or you could trust him to run Disney Corporation or something like that something where there's some fun something where there's media or there's lightheartedness or sales or he's he's a good showman possibly there is some is there some Leo here there is a bit uh, well so outer planets let's take a look at his d10 yeah there's Rahu in Leo but I wouldn't say this is a great prime ministerial chart let's see who does have that kind of chart well by contrast straight away let's take a look at Rishi Sunak does he have a chart that could he could lead a country. Yes, I do think so. We've got an exalted sun here. And the way I've got it set up at the moment, now I don't know his time, but I've got it set up with an exalted sun in the 10th house. That's superb, straight away. That, that's a person who will rise to the top. We've got the midday sun in the midday spot. He can go to the top and he can see everything. So this person is a visionary as well, okay? If indeed we do have his exalted sun in the 10th. We've got a mature moon. This is a Pisces moon, okay? Um, and I do quite like that. The other thing that I really, really like is Ketu in Aquarius. I like that a lot because that's a huge amount of maturity to have achieved, say for example, a Ketu in Aquarius. I do think that this means he's had many incarnations here, okay? To achieve such a mature Ketu right? Very often when I consult a lot of you guys and you've got like a Ketu in Aquarius or Pisces, I know I'm dealing with quite an advanced soul. And we've got that here in the chart of Rishi Sunak. The other thing that I really like about what he's got is all that Leo energy. That is Leo the leader. That is the sun. That is, you know, and, and, the, and that house, the Lord is exalted. Where was I? The Lord is exalted, right? So the other thing that I like about this house with all the Leo energy in it is yes, all the Maka Nakshatra, Okay, so we've got the, the king making stars right there. We've also got Rahu Mars conjunct. I love that. That is the advocate. That's the lawyer. That's the one who pursues justice. That's the one who goes after things, who's a can do, will do. I love all of that. Uh, the other thing I really like as well is Saturn is on the Rahu Ketu axis. Okay, very strong. Also, Lord of Ketu is there with Rahu. He's here to build the future. Very important. He is here to build tomorrow. You know, he's very future focused and he has to hit the ground running kind of thing. And, you know, there's no, this person is not going to benefit from looking at past lives or any of that. No, no, no. He's here to build and he's here to lead and he's here to, to do a lot. Okay, so we can definitely see that with that Leo house there. 
So this is a very, very good chart. The other thing I like about Rishi as well, for someone who can run a country, <coughs> is the triple conjunction of um, Sun, Saturn and Mercury Okay, in D9. And at the moment, the way we have the chart set up, that happens to be in the 10th house. Brilliant. This is a powerhouse placement. Now I'm going to be covering it in the Masters episode that I do about Nelson Mandela. I'll bring up the chart of Nelson Mandela very quickly now. I'll show it to you just very briefly and we'll also take a look at the chart of Aung San Suu Kyi. Let's take a look at her too because both of these people uh, have this placement. So let me bring up There we go. So with Nelson Mandela, we have got this triple conjunction, Mercury, Saturn, Sun in the eighth house in Cancer. Let's take a quick look at the chart of Aung San Suu Kyi. Where does she have it? Yeah, look at that. She's got it conjunct in her 10th house with Rahu there. Hers might be an approximate time because I've got 12 p.m. there. But regardless, she's got this triple conjunction. Okay, and now the other person, so Rishi Sunak has one as well. Okay, we saw that. Let's take a look at the chart of Malcolm Turnbull. Malcolm Turnbull has got this placement. All right, I'm going to tell you about this placement. Now, some of you in my audience, some of my clients, I've worked with you and you've got this placement. This is a superb triple conjunction to have. One of the ways that I've seen this functioning is that it produces in the person an incredible will, a steel will. That's what I always thought about Aung San Suu Kyi, that she had this incredibly strong... I used to see her and I used to think she's got a spine of steel. She's quite incredible. And Nelson Mandela as well. Look at him. Look at how he served and look at how he was. there was so much integrity. He was so... You just couldn't convert him to the dark side, right? You just couldn't do it. You just couldn't do it. He's just too good. That is what this placement is about. One of the things about this placement is that you, if you try to manipulate these people, you will not be able to do it. Not only will you not be able to do it, but it's almost as if like the planets will turn against that person and smack them down. Truly, that is what this placement is like. It's like if you try to mess with this person or turn the mind of this person to mush, forget about it. And not only that, but somehow life will conspire to turn your mind to mush. It will not be good for you. That's what I have seen with these people. That it, it's, it's quite an incredible thing. Um, so if we take a look at the chart of Malcolm Turnbull, why don't we have a look here now? Was he a good prime minister? I have no idea. Um, I don't know. So some of the Aussies in the audience, you're very welcome to comment in the comments below. Guys, you can always share your opinion in the comments below. Please do, I encourage it. Speak freely, say what you want. It's absolutely fine. Just don't send me an email. I just don't want an email about people's opinions with politics. Yeah, I get too many emails, so don't, don't email me. But please put it in the comments below. So was he good, was he not good? I have no idea. But I like the chart because it's a demonstration of a person who will naturally rise to a place where they're running big things. Let's take a look. So what do we have? Now, again, we have an approximation of time here, 12 p.m. But this is a very good approximation because we've got exalted Mars in the first house, Richaki Yog, right there in the first house. We've got exalted Jupiter in the seventh got exalted Saturn in the 10th. What a powerhouse setup that is. All outer planets exalted. So this man is running big circles. Okay, so what he can manage, if we look at Saturn, the thing he can run is huge. He can run a corporation, he can run a bank, he can run a country, right? So we can see what he's running, Saturn exalted, that circle is huge amazing right he's got jupiter exalted another massive circle money fortune all of that huge right we've got mars exalted 
uh, in Capricorn. So the energy, the drive, the energy to do, the energy to work hard, to work harder than everyone else. He's got the physical energy, okay? So there's so much in here that's indicating someone who can run something really, really big. Also, we've got a Virgo moon, which I quite like. I like that that there's a, that Virgo energy there. Virgo energy there is good for a prime minister. It's serious. Virgo people, you know, they're serious. They're responsible, right? It's quite good. So we like that. Let's take a look at one more chart. How are we doing for time? It's six minutes. Why don't we? Let's have a look. So the chart I want to show you now, just to finish off, is the chart of Gail Kelly. Now, Gail Kelly, who is she? She's amazing. She is a South African lady who worked, I believe she worked as a teacher, I think, in South Africa. Then she comes to Australia and she runs, she ends up running a bank, but she started as a teller, I do believe. She started from the very bottom and she worked her way up. She had an MBA. I'm pretty sure there was one interview she was doing at a bank where she had, I think, a little baby girl or someone on her knee and she's at an interview like at a bank right this is all crazy but this all happened and what an amazing life now let's take a look how did she get to the top well i'm sure the mba helped but these stars certainly uh took her there i do believe i think it was destined it was written in the stars so we've got this mars uh exalted look at that incredible mars We've got exalted sun, okay, amazing. We've got exalted Jupiter. So again, we've got these large sort of outer planets. I mean, the sun in the center there, exalted, that's just, that's just incredible leadership, visibility. She can see she's a visionary, right? She can see a lot, but we do have some, she's running some big circles here as well with that exalted Mars and Capricorn. And of course the exalted um, Jupiter there. The other thing that I like, which is pretty amazing is the feminine energies are so beautifully placed. We've got Venus in own house, um, Ketu in uh, Taurus there, also possibly indicating many past lifetimes of having run banks. You know, she's probably done this before. She's probably very experienced through past lives or other lives. And we've got that moon there in Libra, which I, I actually quite like. And the other nice thing is we've got that stability there of Saturn on the Rahu Ketu axis. Again, I keep seeing this in the charts of high profile and famous people. When Saturn is on that Rahu Ketu axis, it is, especially when it's with the Rahu side, it's very stabilizing. It's a very good thing for Rahu because Rahu is a bit out of control otherwise. You know, uh, we, we don't want to see Rahu running amok. Sometimes like a Rahu Jupiter, well, that can be, <laughs> that can be, full-on energy there. Uh, I can't imagine that you'll see too many Rahu Jupiters running a country. But that is my overview on all these different charts. Basically with, with Boris Johnson, what am I going to sum up here? What am I going to say? You know, is he coming? Is he going? What's going on? I think, I think this could go on for a little while, actually. Uh, this could drag on for a while because we've got this retrograde happening in Capricorn. It might well be that he's in for many months despite the, this rebellious energy and this rebellious energy has just come up because Saturn has just dipped into Aquarius. And look at that, he's got his natal Saturn there in Aquarius. So he's had to deal with it. This is, this is through to mid-July. He could leave mid-July, but equally he could hang on for the many months that are left over now. We've got Saturn um transiting going back retrograding back into capricorn and then making his approach to aquarius again and that's going to happen across the next many months so he might find that there are problems and the other thing is saturn might want him in the job because that is the better place for him to be paying the karma because it's more pain which is awful i don't wish pain on anyone i don't want that but equally when I'm trying to look and assess and see, Saturn might want to keep him in there uh, just so that he has the more karmic experience because he wouldn't get the same burn if he's just at home by himself with no cameras on him. So that is one of the things I see there. When I look at his chart, I mean, look, I, I like this person. I don't have any, um, I didn't vote for him. 
but I don't dislike the man. You look at him, he's got some nice things in him. You can see that he'd be quite a fun guy with that Rahu in Gemini. I just think they'd be great to talk to and he would be interesting. And I know he's written books and he's done really interesting things. So I'm definitely not anti anybody. But um, yeah, I've, that's, that's how I see this situation. And I just thought I'd come on and talk about it because it's been a very long time since I've done an Astro Chat episode. And I'm sorry I wasn't well in the July outlook. I know some of you have written in the comments and you've said, oh, it's not the same because you're not there. I know, I'll be back next month, don't worry. I just had a bit of a cold and yeah, I was knocked out. I was in bed for seven days and it was raining here every day. It was so, oh my God, today is the first day in like two weeks where, you know, we've had no rain and I wanted to go out, but I've been at the desk, I've been doing all these readings. For you guys so um, definitely hop online and, and book me if you want a reading I know I think I've taken the booking system down for a little bit but if you uh, would like a reading then you know you can also pop me an email uh, I'm I'm open to to doing things direct but I think the booking system will open again I think it's 18 July something like that so you can always come back when it's open but guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to get back to doing more Astro Chat episodes. It's been such a long time since I've done these. I'm going to do more of them. So stay tuned. There's more to come. Thank you so much for watching. And I look forward to seeing you next time.